This is Mick Elliott at uh, European Microwave Week and I am here with Ryan Jennings who is Director of Satcoms and Systems at Corvo. First of all, Corvo have used European Microwave Week as a platform for a new beamforming IC. Ryan will talk us through some of the features. Thanks. Uh, yeah, we're excited to be here at uh, European Microwave Week. Uh, we, uh, as you say, we just uh, introduced uh, a new product. Um, it is it, expanding our portfolio of beamformer technology uh, into a, it's a half duplex version of our KU band part. Uh, so focused for Leo Satcom connectivity uh, with, uh, you know, the likes of Starlink and OneWeb mm -hmm. and uh, uh, GMS out, out of, out of uh, China uh, and, and others that I think are coming as well as the, the, the Leo market continues to explode with new constellations all the time, it seems. Uh, so we're excited to, you know, to bring this new product to our portfolio at Corvo. Um, it, it supports, uh, as the Beamformer supports four antenna elements that are, you know, each of the elements are both transmit and receive. So it allows you to make a, a smaller antenna with a half duplex, uh, with instead of a full duplex where you have to have separate transmit and receive antennas. Um, it is, uh, you know, our latest technology of both silicon and packaging, mm -hmm. uh, which has uh, enabled us to have a, you know, very high performance. Uh, it should be industry leading performance capabilities, both in DC power efficiencies and noise figure, uh, but also at a very a small physical size um, for the silicon, which mm -hmm. uh, leads directly to a lower cost type yeah. solution. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, so yeah, we, uh, uh, you know, we've completed all of our initial tests of the, the first product and everything is, is looking excellent. Um, and so we uh, will be providing, uh, you know, samples and, uh, you know, early product requests for certainly for some of our key customers in the next couple of months uh, with, with, you know, larger volumes available uh, early, early next year. So. Okay. This means they're kind of swap C uh, requirements. Uh, yeah, it does. You know, it, it, the, you know, lower, small, smaller, less weighty packages. Correct, and and you know this this half duplex solutions. There's typically what are used for you know the lower end terminals, whether it be you know at home internet capabilities or uh, you know mobility for commercial applications, uh, where cost is very very important. Yeah, um, and so that we really focused on that as being one of our you know, uh, key performance indicators when we did this development was cost was one of the top five. Uh -huh. Okay. What, what, what's the outcome for customers? You know, is it, does it speed up their design? Does it take uh, pressure off other, other, techno other work they have to do on, on their, their end products? Um, I wouldn't say it necessarily, uh, the actual beamformer doesn't do a lot of that other than the fact that, you know, we, we view things at Corvo at a system level you know, while we're a component company, we know that we have to design our components to work in the system. Mm -hmm. And and my background actually is not in semiconductors at all. Okay, I am the systems guy. Okay. I've built phased arrays for many, many years in yeah. my previous life. Um, and so we take that knowledge and incorporate that into what we design because you can design all kinds of really interesting mimics. Mm -hmm. Doesn't necessarily mean that's the right thing for the application. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so that's a big focus of us is making sure that we're designing it to have the right feature sets, the right capabilities, so that it does exactly what the customers need in their in solution. Um, and we have a, uh, an applications team to both support our customers in not only just the implementation of say the control of our parts, but also in the design. Uh, so we, yeah. we do regularly do design reviews with our customers because uh, we have a very strong you know, team of, of people like myself mm -hmm. uh, with a background in the systems and the antenna development piece of things. So uh, but I think from that perspective, it does really enhance our customer's ability mm -hmm. to get to market faster okay. because we're able to provide a product that's exactly what they need yeah. and support them in the implementation of it. Okay. And so samples are out there with the customers now and you're working with the customer. Yeah, so this particular product, the samples will be available uh, in, a, in about a month. Okay. Uh, we've done all the initial testing and now we're just building up the inventory so we can start uh, sending out the samples. But with some of the lower Earth orbit satellites now, that is a growing market. Oh, absolutely. It looks like, it's, it's, it's exploding market. Yeah, yes, okay. Absolutely. It's, it's, a, it's amazing 
Um, you know, KU band has been the primary growth area just because mm -hmm. of what's available with mm -hmm. Starlink yeah. and OneWeb. Uh, but now as Kuiper is starting to launch, Telesat's gonna start launching, Iris here in Europe is mm -hmm. gonna start launching, um, KA band is the next big explosive mm. markets. So, so, so just to be clear, when you said it expands the portfolio, you have an FDD product yes, we and have, now you've got a TDD product correct. as well. That's yep. correct. Uh. Yeah, we introduced our new, our latest generation of the FDD product back at SAT show in March. Mm -hmm. um, and so that, that product is, is available, uh, you know, now for customers to do new designs with. Uh, we also have a KA band product that's in test right now. So expect to be hearing more about that product in the in the coming months as well as we as we bring that to market okay that's terrific and i believe you've been in a collaboration with uh, SIAE microelectronica we have. Uh, with using this beam forming ic can you just tell us a little bit about that oh yeah actually that's a a, a unique situation because it, it's not e any of our traditional satcom beam formers <laughs> um because it what what they're doing is the the downlink uh, so it's a different frequency band mm -hmm. than the traditional, uh, you know, Starlink, OneWeb, all those that we've already talked about. Um, it is, it's a much, it's high KA band frequencies. And so they actually have taken one of our parts that was designed for 5G and have put that into an array okay. to put in space. Right. So it's very unique, very innovative. <laughs> um, and, it, you know, uh, we were actually, they presented at our uh, our panel last, uh, yesterday. Oh. And, uh, you know, they've done an amazing job with that design. And, uh, you know, it looks like a, a very, uh, you know, very unique application mm -hmm. yeah. for a commercial part. Yeah. Uh -huh. okay. So we're excited about uh, about where they can go with that. And, you know, as we have more and more satellites that, that, you know, are collecting data or generating data, you gotta have that pipeline to get it back down yeah. to earth. Mm -hmm. Uh, so as more and more of those satellites get deployed, this technology is key to being able to to maximize okay. the amount of time by electronically steering the antenna yeah. to point yeah. to the ground station okay. right. to downlink the data. Okay, so that's the beauty of it. It actually directs the... It, it actually directs it because today they can only downlink mm -hmm. when the, the fixed antenna is above yeah. the ground station. Okay. Now they can actually get an additional 20 to 40 minutes okay. of time yeah. where they're able to downlink data. So it, it really increases the, the more flexibility. The, the whole, Correct. Okay. How, how far along are you, are, are you with the collaboration? Where, where's the end game? Uh, like? So right now, I think they're they're funded uh, to build prototypes. Mm -hmm. yep. and, and so they're in the midst of, of doing that prototype and prototype testing. Okay. And uh, hopefully, uh, you know, with the positive results that I've seen so far, mm -hmm. uh, that, that project will continue to get to get funded to move forward. Okay, this is part of a European project, a batch it, it, European? It is, yeah. 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 Yes, okay. Yeah, it's right. a European okay. government funded. Okay. Ryan Jennings, thank you very much indeed. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you.